There were a few murmurs on Facebook that uh, people are missing Arnab Goswami and the big debate. So we thought we'll step in. And uh, today evening, ladies and gentlemen, after we have an exact laser sharp 15 minute break, we'll be back here for a fiery debate, which we again call the big debate. We have six industry leaders, moderated by uh, Mr. S. V. Nathan of uh, NHRD and Deloitte. So look forward to uh, having you here again in another 15 minutes. The big debate, uh, the topic is, should I leak it, uh, Raj? Should I leak the topic? Yeah, I should, okay. Uh, should, do young companies need a HR head? And this is a HR conference. So look forward to meeting you again in 15 minutes. Thank you very much. May I request Mr. S. V. Nathan, our General Secretary of uh, the National Chapter, to take over the proceedings, please. Nathan, sir, over to you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. We've got, uh, at least I heard some four voices, and that's very encouraging. Thank you. So. Just in some random order, I'm just going to call out some names and request them to come onto the stage. We have um, Mr. Anand Bhaskar, founder and CEO of Planet Ganges. Something, he has been the CHRO of Sapient for over 25 years, done the CHRO job, and now he's the guy who's crossed the fence. He's, um, he's going to be speaking for the motion, which says, young companies do not need an HR head. I mean, just imagine this guy. He's been in HR for 25 years, and then he crosses over and he says, we don't need HR guys for small companies. Anyways, but, but thank you. I now invite um, Hari, T.N. Hari, head of uh, HR of Big Basket. Hari, welcome aboard. Hey, we can be a little more enthusiastic than that. Come on. So I asked Hari, I said, what is unique about you? So he says, this is my fifth startup where I'm going in as a HR head. So I said, oh, you, you certainly qualify for speaking for the motion, which says, uh, for this, which says, young companies need an HR head. So that's what Hari's going to be on. I'm going to invite um, Esther, Esther Martinez, founding editor, CEO. Again, Esther, where is she? So Esther is on her way. So why didn't you come up, Esther? Oh, she, she's getting mic'd up. Okay. So she's again been in HR for a long time. She's now this, the, the CEO, and she's going to take on this role which says, hmm, we don't need an HR head. So Esther, come on board. We, we, have, the, we have the guru of all startups, the very famous Mr. Ganesh, a serial entrepreneur, promoter of companies like Big Basket, Bluestone, Portia, Medicals, et cetera, et cetera. So, so Ganesh, very glad to have you on board. We also have, uh, I'm requesting Mr. Jebi Cherian, Chairman and Chief Strategy Officer of Blue Birch, to come on. And um, he's a really big guy, huh? so he is, he was earlier the managing partner of IBM Consulting, all of Southeast Asia, and I, and, and he does a lot of cool things, which is even beyond all of this. And this is about giving of himself and his time to something which is very, very elevating, something what was referred to earlier by Swamiji. And um, so more of that perhaps later. And then we really have a a very, very famous gentleman who has been the promoter for over 25 years. He's, a, he's really a big guy. So Ravi, there's a pun intended there. So this is Ravi Gururaj. Who doesn't know him? He's the founder and CEO of QuickPod. Welcome. He's also the promoter. He's also the founder and CEO of QuickPod. So we have everybody in place. And... Um, 
I need to get mic'd up as well, or even if you can give me just a hand mic, that'll be fine. My name is Nathan. It, uh, it's a very, very short name. My original name, if you're all ready. Mannargudi, Naganatha, Subramanya, Vaidinatha, Ayer. Just call me Nathan, it's so much more easier. Um, Bala, where is he? Oh, there you are. So Bala called me and he said, Nathan, you must be the moderator of this session. And I said, hey, boss, I'm really very scared of being a moderator. He says, D don't worry. W what's your concern? He says, I'm very concerned that people will boo me off stage. He says, don't worry, Nathan. You cannot boo and yawn at the same time. So I thought that was good. Anyways, I also know that uh, you, can, you can get a lot of inspiration coming in from, from stories. My favorite is Mullah Nasruddin. And that is why I, I decided that, you know, this is not a bad job after all. Um, and my wife also was kind of instrumental in me taking over this role. So, and you asked me how. So, a person who puts an idea into your head, a person who puts an idea into your head is a teacher. A person who takes money from me and puts it into her pocket is my wife. Sorry, a businessman, a person who can do both, which is put an idea into my head and money in her pocket is my wife. A person who can do neither, which is put money in their pocket or put an idea into your head is a moderator. So I adequately qualify and that's the reason why I'm here. But more than that, um, I also think that this is a job where the moderator really does not have to exercise much of what he thinks he knows about that subject because I'm always inspired by what I hear in stories. So this is the story of Mullah Nasruddin. Mullah Nasruddin was walking one day. Maybe I should just come there. Thank you. So Mullah Nasruddin was, was, was walking one day and he was outside a courthouse and um, the judge on that particular day had not come in. He's kind of late. And people were very, very worried that we got a long queue of a lot of stuff happening. They caught hold of the first available chap, that was Mullah Nasruddin. So they got Mullah and they made him sit in this chair as the judge. As soon as that got done, the first case came up. There was a farmer on one side, there was another person on the other side, and they were quarreling over a hen. The fact of the case is like this. So this farmer gets up and says, Mullah Sahib, this hen that you see, which is the bone of contention, is my hen. And I can prove to you beyond doubt that this is my hen. This is where she was born, in my, in my farm, and I can tell you this is my hen. Everybody can tell you it's my hen. So Mullah looks at uh, this farmer and says, Ha ha, absolutely, you're right. You're absolutely right. And uh, the person on the other side starts to get worried and says, hey, hello, you've not even listened to me. As a judge, you've got to be impartial. So yeah, yeah, go ahead, tell me. So the person on the other side says, the hen is actually mine. And this is the reason why. Every day, she flies across the wall. She will come and sit and eat all the feed that I have for my other chicken. And therefore, having fed that hen, rightfully, she's mine. And Mullah looked at this farmer and said, yeah, you're absolutely right, you're absolutely right. Now, there was this court gumasta, this is the, the guy, and he's trying to keep everybody honest out here. He looks at Mullah and says, hey, Mullah, you cannot do this. You got to say either you are right or you are right. You cannot say this to both. And Mullah looks at that court jester and says, Hi, you are also right. <laughs> so having established my credentials as a moderator, <laughs> let me dive straight in and tell you a little bit about the subject to hand today. So what we have is our topic for debate is startups don't need an HR head. That's pretty much where it is. Um, India ranks in the world as a land of the fastest growing 
base of startups, features in the first five largest startup communities in the world. I'm told it's actually number four. 4,200 young entrepreneurs working overtime to make these ideas blossom into business. Exponential growth, NASCOM says over 40% in the year 2015. For new ventures, it means that there is a little bit of preparation that is required. The difference between creating a culture in organizations or becoming completely bogged down in the operations of the day-to-day -day stuff that happens in companies as they grow. So we have a few things for the motion. For the motion, we have things like, why should I do all this stuff? I think you've got people on either side going to do this, so I'm going to spare you from listening to all of this stuff. But basically, we are debating this about, do we really need an HR head for a small organization? Do we really need this? So that is pretty much where what we have. And um, what we will have today as the first speaker, and the way this will go is, there'll be about three to four minutes for the motion, which says young companies do not need this. And then after three to four minutes, and I'll, I'll go by my watch. And um, as soon as that is done, we will allow for some person on the other side to do a rebuttal. So there is somebody will say, no, no, I don't think that is right. And I'll tell you the <laughs> format of how that's got to be done also in a moment. Then it then springs back to you, and that's how this will move up and down. I have made a very special request to all the people on the dais that you've got to be both evocative and provocative as well. <laughs> Just imagine that these are the guys that you've got to run them down to the ground. I'm talking to all of you guys. And your job is to return the favor. So that's all that we will be doing this evening. And um, so to kick this whole thing off, we will request Jebby. And Jebby is going to be speaking about young companies do not need an HR head. So Jebby, all yours. Thank you, Dan. <coughs> Can you hear me? So actually coming to an HR conference and, and speaking for the motion here is almost like going to an Aam Aadmi Party conference and singing the BJP praises. <laughs> Right, so with that caveat, um, let me start. Um, when you look at a startup, what do you see first? It's the passion, right? The passion for, for redefining the rules of, of whatever they encounter. And you look at the passion of an HR organization or, or lack thereof, it's all about driving consistency of rules and adherence to specific processes. So how do the two coexist? Right? A, an organization which is driven by passion, which is driven by this need to redefine the rules in which they operate, um, with an organization that wants to adhere to rules. So I maintain that the best way to kill a passion of a startup is to hire an HR leader. So I've had many, um, um, I have many HR friends, including Raj, which I doubt if he will continue to remain my friend after tonight. Um, so I asked people, you know, what is the role of HR? And, uh, well, they gave me this, this you know, high-funded stuff. It's about culture building and it's about leadership and uh, talent development. So let me take um, one of those uh, or each of that at, at one time. Building a culture of an organization is the ownership of the founder of an organization or the leader of the organization. You cannot outsource that. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So you cannot outsource that, right? Um, because culture is not devoid of the, of the execution parameters of, in which the organization operates. So all of these soft things about culture, about you know, values and all of that are very important. But it is only important in the context of how the organization strategy is being implemented on the ground. Right? So outsourcing the creation of the culture of an organization is like having an accounts payable clerk being made, re made responsible for the fundraising strategy of the organization. Right? Culture is owned by the founders of the organization. Now let's move on to the leadership part of it. Again, 
leadership and talent management and talent spotting is a line function. It is not a staff function that belongs to an HR or a finance or any of the other support functions. Because again, leadership and talent should be looked at from a context in which the markets in which the startup operates. So to ask a staff function that is sitting in the confines of a, of a headquarters to be looking at the ty kind of talent that the organization needs um, is again kind of like having your accounts payable clerk look at the fundraising strategy. So is HR important? Now, I'm not demeaning the activities that today we bucket under this, this heading called HR, which is recruitment and employee engagement and compensation and rewards and benefits and all of that. But all of those activities are important. So are the activities of an accounts payable clerk and an accounts receivable clerk, right? But we do not let them define or we don't, we don't say that you know, they are the most critical function within an organization. So with that, you know, I move forward this proposition, Nathan, that a startup do not need an, a dedicated HR function. I, I love the way that he says, you know, these guys, all they do is kill passion. They are more like account clerks, and how do you expect them to do fundraising? So if that is not provocative, I wonder what is. Um, would any of you gentlemen want to rebut that? So I think, you know, I'd start off by saying, one, we should not confuse small with startup, right? I think startups themselves have a life of their own. They have an ambitious, uh, an audacious goal to become a large company, fast. So, you know, I think uh, maybe our moderator, he rephrased the topic of the debate as startup small, but, uh, but I, I would say it's really about startup. That's number one. Uh, number two, I don't think we should confuse, uh, you know, passion with confusion <laughs> and chaos. I think startups need as much process as anything. In fact, there are four uh, roles a founder plays. The foremost is hiring. Uh, the second is fundraising. The third is selling. And the fourth is innovating, right? Any startup founder who's doing anything but these four things is wasting a lot of time, right? I mean, so for hiring is the first one. And in fact, you know, uh, startups, I would argue, need a HR leader more than anything. I think, you know, so I would not confuse just because they're passionate that they want to be disorganized and chaotic. I think that's a very, dif very different uh, argument to be had. Uh, I think the third thing that I heard you say uh, was outsourcing. We're not talking about outsourcing here. We're talking about augmenting. We're talking about accelerating. We're talking about, uh, you know, in some sense, enhancing the leader. You know, you, you would argue then that a startup founder should have no admin, no accountant, uh, no anybody else in the company, because why? He could do everything. He or she could do everything. You know, it's like these are functional roles where you have functional experts, and you need that just as much. In fact, the startup at the very beginning is doing the, the most critical sets of hires, and at that, it's at that point that you need the HR. Uh, talent and the HR domain expert. So I hope that uh, rebuts some of your points. <laughs> so, so that's a very classic uh, debate trick you've done there, uh, which is setting up a straw man and destroying the straw man. I never argued that processes aren't important, right? Uh, in fact, processes and technology are extremely critical as organizations scale up, right? So um, my argument was said, is this better? Uh, so I always said that you know the processes, whether it is from recruitment to uh, compensation and benefits, they are all important, right? But to have one person be responsible for managing that, in my view, is not critical. Those should be owned by the CEO or the founder of the organization. Okay, so it just—I mean, these are just like the warm-up ones. So I'm now going to be requesting Hari to speak about Hari of um, Big Basket, to speak about young companies need an HR head. Thanks. Um, so Nathan has urged us all to be provocative. So I'll try and be as provocative as possible. So the topic is young companies don't need HR head. I've heard this theme in the past before in HR conferences. One other theme that I commonly keep coming across is what does HR need to do to get a seat at the table? I've been a part of other conferences as well, which is you know other professionals, accounting professionals, 
you know, technology conferences, none of them ever discuss these kind of topics, which is, does my function need a seat at the table, or does my function head need to be a part of this company? I think the very thought of these topics really indicates some degree of, you know, lack of assurance, lack of self-confidence in yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be coming up with these Raji kinds of topics. just cursed you, huh? So, I, otherwise, you wouldn't even be coming up with a topic like this. So, once in a while, I do ponder, why do these topics keep coming up repeatedly in HR conferences? Hey, hey Hari, sorry to interject. You want to look at these guys when you're talking and, and tell them that they're full of gas? Sure. <laughs> Audio yeah. work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. look at these guys. Okay. So, um, that's the thing I wonder, you know, why do these kind of topics even come up? It does, in fact, smack of some degree of lack of assurance or lack of confidence in your profession itself. I, because I've never seen anybody, any other profession talk about these kind of topics. They're never there anywhere else. So, when I think about why this happens, I really feel that for most HR professionals, HR was never a first choice. They are there in it, not by choice, but because they didn't find anything better to do. They didn't get admission into an MBA business, they put it an MBA in HR. And over a period of time, you know, were lost in organizing blood donation camps and, you know, between <laughs> Christmas parties, they figured Thank out you, that, that they do lack some kind of competence, which is respected. <laughs> As a result of which they are not... Hey, that's more like a self-goal, man. Come on. Yeah. You got yeah. it. They're they're loving it. They're so, absolutely yeah. loving I'm it. Coming to the I point, which is, I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that the question is not about whether young companies need an HR head. The question is, do young companies need the right HR head? Oh. Because most HR heads, to my mind, are fully into blood donation camps and Christmas parties. A lot of them. And therefore, the topic itself comes. Otherwise, this topic wouldn't come up. This topic comes because of that reason. So if you get the right HR head, if you had the right mix of you know, skills in the HR head profession, then I don't think this kind of topic would have come. So I really believe that HR heads are very important for a young company. And a lot of things are accomplished. I've been working for four successful startups. We exited, and this is my fifth. And I can tell you with some real life examples, I think I'll, I'll finish my three minutes, but then I'll share my examples, very, very specific examples of what happened and what were some of the contributions, what were make or break, what, did the things, what were the things that the HR head did. So I really think that if an HR head can clean up shit, can make things happen, can think strategically, understands business as well as the business functions, has rotated through other functions, played an active role in managing other functions like technology, product, that HR head will succeed. If you have a pure play HR head who started his career or her career in HR and has all along stayed, that is not the right kind of an HR person to lead a startup or a young company. And because you find mostly such HR heads, this question itself arises. Otherwise, this question itself wouldn't. So, Hari, you say, you say young companies read the right HR head. So, anyways, um, anybody out to rebut that? Yeah, so, I think I can't agree with you more, uh, uh, Hari. I think... Uh, I spent 25 years in HR, you know, always in a situation where everyone's throwing eggs at me, saying, you are HR, you useless HR guy. You know, I'm really loving it being on the other side, now throwing eggs at HR. Okay? And the interesting part is, uh, HR is nothing but an entertainment department. Okay? It's not engagement. There's no employee So this is what you've been doing for 25 years. Okay, continue. <laughs> Good one. So HR is doing nothing but entertainment. Now, you've got to do employee engagement, I think that's not there. This is the only function, interestingly, the only function that is justifying its existence all throughout. Look at this debate topic today. Everyone is saying, hey, you know, young startups need HR. Anyone else talking about young startups need marketing? Young startups need accounting? You need an accountant here, you need a financial analyst, you need a fundraising expert. Nobody is talking about that. This is an interesting talk. This itself just says that, it, you know, young startups do not need HR. That's the reality. Because in a startup, the person who's attracting talent is not the brand because there's no brand. It's just the founder. The founder is the brand of the organization. He's attracting talent or she's attracting talent. There's Esther out here, there's Anandi out here. People would come work for me or work for her. They won't work for the company. They don't even know what the hell we do. They don't even know what vision we have. They believe in us. They believe in our story. That's what they come and work for. And they, they live for that and their passion is entirely towards the person. And then it translates into the idea over a period of time and then it connects, and when the idea becomes very big, probably then they start connecting to a system. And I think a founder is most equipped to actually put the system in place. And a founder wants to pick his people. The founder wants to have the right people on the team. So I think the role of 
the founder is crucial in hiring. I could agree that fundraising is also done by the founder. HR has no clue about fundraising. They don't even understand how business runs. And that's the biggest problem. Now, the big if that you kept quoting is if HR understood business. That's a very pertinent if. Problem is, the if doesn't exist. That's the problem. So if that if existed, probably HR would be needed. Since that if doesn't exist, and we are constantly sitting out here justifying our existence, fact of the matter is, probably HR is not needed. And let's face it. So the only looking at it is a probability, right? I mean, so you're not really fully convinced, are you? Not really. OK. Anyway, about that, would, that should happen, because for 25 years you've been in this, and you've again moved over. Um, I now request, Ganesh, you want to go next? So he's going to say, young companies need an HR head. Hey, by the way, just as to let you in, when I first said, this is what you got to say, he says, but I'd like to be on the other side. <laughs> so you have a guy who is completely convinced that we need an HR head. Please continue. I think the mullah is doing a good job here. <laughs> <laughs> no, the reason, the reason is simple. My wife, Meena Ganesh, was supposed to be a part of the panel. She had chosen this side. She had to urgently go to Mumbai today. So I am a backup uh, substitute uh, for Mina. <laughs> for, for Mina, that's how that's how I'm here. Okay, right. But no, I think fundamentally, a startup. I have done 18 startups. Okay, right. That means I have started, promoted 18 startups. Okay, right. So uh, while I appreciate 25 years of entertainment experience that Anand has had, okay, right. This is okay, right. This is. This is the, the this is this is uh, same years of experience with actually starting, being the employee number one, being the founder director of 18 startups. Okay, right. So, uh, I'll tell you what, what what is the perspective that we come from. I think we are confusing between abdicating HR function to a HR head. We are confusing between setting the direction, setting the tone, being involved in hiring your key people, all that a founder has to do, okay, right? I, I've done that, okay, right? So it's not, it's not should a founder leave everything to the HR head. That's not the topic here. But if you look at startup, I'm sure all of you have heard of this statistics. Less than 5% of the startups succeed. So to do a startup, to be a founder, you need to be really stupid because you are betting on odds of you are doing something with full passion, jumping off the cliff when you know statistically you have only 5% chance of success. None of us would ever play a game where our chance of success are 5%. Now, when you have 5% chance of success, how do you survive? What you do is you increase your odds of success. You try to see, you clutch at the straws and try to take each and every minute minuscule steps that can help you succeed. Okay. Being a founder is tough. You have to handle everything. Okay, right? it's, it's very tough. Startup just doesn't know where it's going to go. The market will change, the competition will change, the government will change, demonetization will come, somebody will die, some one will come. All of that happens. Okay, right? At that time, you cannot be trying to do everything all by yourself. You need functional experts. Having a HR head, I have always had HR people in my companies, right at the beginning on day one. It doesn't mean I'm not involved. That HR person is not a business person, yes, obviously. HR person may not have the same vision that I have, yes. It is just like having a good marketing person, good accounting person, good this one. Just because you want to drive, will you, will you start replacing the driver? Why would you want to do that stuff? You would rather get a driver and focus on what you can do things. A star founder, a startup, can do certain, they are, they are there to do certain things which only they can do. They need all the help of functional experts. And I really take offense to the fact that, you must take an offense to the fact that you are being compared to an accounting clerk or a billing clerk or somebody like that. Or even a how, driver. Or even a driver, yeah. So you cannot, <laughs> you cannot be. How many of you think, how many of you think you are equivalent to an accounting clerk or a billing clerk? Please raise your hand. Is that the level you are? No. In so fact, what do? So what is to be done? What is to be done? 
you you have have the functional expert increase the chance of success right from there i have colonel murli lambiar here who was with me in one of my startups as the head of head of hr okay right very early they bring lot of functional expertise it doesn't mean that i don't interview it doesn't mean the tone is set by me the vision is set by me i am the brand i will go and stand i will go and make the presentation i will convince that in no way takes away the need for a hr person because hr function is not accounting billing clerical function it is a function which is a key function that has got specific expertise all of you have spent years learning it uh, practicing it it is not something that i as a founder can replace there are a lot of things i do which you cannot do there are a lot of things which you do which i cannot do that is really thing people talk about i i'll just share one people people say man you have hr you have trained department you have learning and development you train all these people and after that they take all the learnings and they go for another job at 10% 5% higher salary what happens if you train them so well and they leave your competitor gets them trained people you have spent all the expense i asked them the reverse question what happens if they are not trained and they stay stay back okay which is worse which one would you like to have somebody who is not trained and staying with you or take the risk of training him and of and of leaving so i i i absolutely feel you need the hr people it doesn't mean the ceo is outsourcing or abdicating the responsibility or the founder is abdicating responsibility and you need to be involved but without it you are significant